Der Windkanone, the, the, the wind cannon, which would send a vortex of air. Now, this picture has been widely reproduced, and of course, people have widely misinterpreted it. So, let me turn it for you the right way up, and you will then see how the thing is supposed to be. Uh, because, in fact, that was in the resting, the dormant position, as it were. And if you'd like to see the insides, we can remove the side for you as well. That's how the thing actually was set up uh, to fire in anger. And this produced an incredible plug of air. And indeed, this device has since been revived. There is almost now a vortex cannon industry. There are dozens of designs online for how to build your own. It's become a widespread hobby. I mean, and look at this example from a company in California. This is a scaled down vortex cannon. The original German version was around 20 times bigger. The German gun was designed to create a vortex or whirlwind strong enough to rip their wings from an aircraft. <clears throat> an explosive charge is placed inside the cannon. Upon ignition, an invisible vortex is fired into the air at 100 miles an hour. Well, This one is harmless enough. It makes a lot of noise and can shatter a pane of glass. It did? Huh. But the Germans not only had a much bigger gun, they added a special ingredient, powdered coal dust, which, when mixed with the exploding vortex, made it far more powerful. It was known for centuries that powders in air will explode. Flour in a flour mill can suddenly explode. Coal dust, coal powder, in a mine can suddenly explode. And it was an Austrian invention during the war to try and harness this process to create a vortex gun. The reaction of the coal dust with air made the vortex bigger and bigger until it became the size of a small whirlwind. The dust would continue burning, fueling the spiral as it goes, and in theory at least, setting off an enormous whirlwind that was enough to bring down a plane. Like the sound gun and the wind gun, the vortex gun never quite made it on the battlefield. The idea was truly extraordinary. It was truly extraordinary, um, and it was picked up recently by the BBC. Now, the BBC run a very well-intentioned programme. Most well-intentioned programmes are also rubbish. Otherwise, they wouldn't need to be well-intentioned. And this is a dreadful show run by the best kind of people you can possibly imagine, the most philanthropically minded, open-hearted people you can imagine. It's called Bangos the Theory. Uh, Bangos the Production Values might possibly be a better title. And they decided that they would create their own version. And here is their vortex. And I want you to notice this little bit from the programme because you will hear there is no mention whatever that the Germans ever thought of it, or that anybody else had ever made one, or that indeed in America there's an industry producing them by the dozen. Um, this is what the BBC made of their vortex gun. I'd like to drag you back to my world, a world obsessed with vortex cannons. My prototype vortex cannon flew a bottle into a bin from 20 feet. But I've been working day and night to go a lot, lot further and do something that this country has never seen before. I've taken a huge risk and scaled it up. 150 litres of exploding acetylene and oxygen. Here goes. It's the first time it's ever been fired. Three, two, one. Oh, yes! Ho, ho, ho. He modestly exclaimed. <laughs> Uh, note, note that we are enjoined to believe that this has never happened before. So, would you like to see a device built in the 1920s and on show at the Antiques Department of an Agricultural Fair? Well, take a look at this one, ladies and gentlemen. Three, two, one, go! Right, this is a vortex cannon, powered by a Saturday. It makes a vortex. You may even see the shape of the vortex as it heads out towards the Mulvans. Three, two, one, go! And that 
Now these are from Nectar Orchards in California. That's awesome. This is a famed ex-basketball player. Are we ready for this then? We're ready. Okay. <laughs> So it might not be quite as unique, quite as novel, or entirely as unprecedented as the BBC would have its viewers believe. Would you like to come back to the early years of the century? And here are some vortex cannons in Queensland, in Australia. They were designed and built in order to break up hailstones, it was fancifully believed, and as in this case, sometimes to bring on rain by disrupting cloud formations. It wouldn't work. But in fact, these vortex cannons on the scale that the BBC were making them, and bigger, were produced in Victorian times. This is the earliest reference I've ever found. Uh, a man called Steiger who invented them, showing them at uh, the big trade fair in Padua in 1902. Um, so there is another myth exploded. Uh, it is true that the Germans tried to harness this incredible energy. It is not true that Bango's The Theory told the story quite as accurately as they might.